So a general principle in security is uh, that security is a cost. Security is expensive. So it's not the case that the more security you have, the better it is, but usually it is a trade-off uh, between the risk, what is the risk that something goes wrong, uh, what happens then, what is the value of uh, the different assets, the different things you have in your system if they get exposed. Uh, and another trade-off is, for example, very often the performance of the system or other qualities. So if you, for example, add a very strong encryption, it might make things slower. There are always other trade-offs, uh, for example, user acceptance. If you add uh, a many-layer authentication, like two or three-factor authentication or biometric authentication, there might at some point be a resistance from the users. So in general, it's not that you should have the maximum security, you should try to analyze what's a, a good security level for the application that you're having. Um, and what usually happens is that you do a trade-off analysis between uh, what is the risk and what is the likelihood. So uh, in a way, what is the consequence if something is happening and what's the likelihood that it happens. This is something you very often see also in other areas, for example, if uh, meteorological organizations often use this to decide whether they should give out a warning, a weather warning, uh, where you say that, okay, if the consequence is very high and the likelihood is very high, we need to do something. In the security case, well, this is really where we want to reduce this somehow. Either we want to make it less likely or we want to reduce the consequences of something happening. If something is very likely but it also doesn't have very strong consequences, maybe we don't need to do something. And similar, if there is a very strong consequence, it's very severe if something happens but it's so unlikely, uh, then maybe we also don't need to do anything. So this is usually what you do in this kind of uh, trade-off analysis or assessment of what is going on. Now, uh, what you want to look at is uh, essentially what kind of policies should be in place. What kind of things do we need to decide in a company uh, with respect to security? Usually what you look at are, I already mentioned it, are the so-called assets. That's basically the things. What kind of data do we have? What kind of uh, objects do we have that are somehow valuable. For instance, in the course book, the example is of a, uh, of a medical system, a medical information system. So imagine you are in a hospital and you're storing patient data, then the assets might be that you have this kind of patient data and if it gets exposed, that's quite severe because someone could read the uh, patient records and figure out what kind of diseases they have and that's rather uh, confidential data so it shouldn't get exposed. So usually you start looking at that. Uh, there might be other things that are simply not relevant. So you might have a, an asset a database of uh, who are the suppliers the, the hospital is ordering from. And if this is getting exposed, well, the severity is maybe not that high, the consequence is not that high. So there are different levels depending on what kind of assets you have. And the first step is usually which of our assets do we need to protect because they're very sensitive, which ones are not as, uh, as sensitive. So that's one thing. Uh, usually you also look at procedures. What are we doing to protect our assets? Uh, for example, if we look at application security, we might talk about are we following certain programming guidelines. Uh, if we talk about operating security, it's are we, for example, having password policies that p users have to change their password often enough or they are only allowed to log in if no one is nearby or I don't know what. So different procedures that are uh, in place. Then we have the responsibilities. So who in the organization is responsible for following up on these things, for example? Uh, who is responsible that the passwords are changed? Is that automatically enforced by the system or is someone reminding people? Uh, or if we talk about confidential data, is it the responsibility of the nurse or the doctor to make sure that uh, the name is not mentioned in the patient record so that if the patient record gets exposed, the person reading it doesn't know who uh, this patient is. So that might be another thing. And then very often in, in companies uh, there are existing 
policies already. So if you introduce a new uh, system, it's not like you have to come up with all the new things, but there might already be certain procedures or responsibilities in place uh, that, for example, say wh whenever you add, whenever you edit a patient record, you should do that on your, on your own computer only. It's not allowed to use the phone. Or things like that. So these are typical things we might want to go through when we when we look at uh, application and operating security for software. Um, and the way we can do this depends very much uh, where we are in our development. So if we if we look at the classical waterfall model, so we have the requirements engineering or the planning phase, we might have architecture and then we have design and implementation and we have the operating of the system, the system is rolled out and operated. Uh, you can make these security assessments, of course, at very different stages. So uh, you could do this in the very early beginning when you plan the system that you basically say, what are the assets we're going to have? Do we need to protect them? Do we not need to protect them? Uh, what do we need to do? When you do the architecture or the design, you can think about, are we following any architectures that are very suitable for application security? like? Uh, the layered architecture, for example, and when you're operating, uh, you can again do security risk assessment. You can look at, uh, for example, what are the operating procedures we're having? Do we need to change anything? So uh, again, there are multiple ways of doing this and it's not necessarily better to do it here or here. In practice, it's a combination because certain things are good to look at when you're planning, certain things might be more suitable in uh, in the design or in the operation of the system. So uh, essentially you try to cover a certain ground when doing this uh, security assessments. Okay, so that's a rough overview of how do you look at security, how do you plan this, when do you do it. Um, we'll now dive a bit into the assets and, and this kind of risk assessment. What can you do there? There are quite some examples in the book, so I would strongly recommend to look at that to give, get some more practical ideas. Um, but we'll just quickly look at one way of doing that, which is, which is essentially coming up with a tabular format where you try to identify the different assets, uh, look at how valuable they are, look at how critical it is if they get exposed, and then come up with uh, strategies, essentially.